really well-known book. Let me grab it real quickly. Happy Wisdom Wednesday, everyone. So this week I want to review a very uh, interesting book. This is a very heavy book um, full of fantastic information by an incredibly gifted writer, and that is Robert Greene, uh, and the book is The Laws of Human Nature. Now, something interesting about, Ryan, uh, about Robert Greene is that he actually was mentor to Ryan Holiday, the famous author who's written uh, great books such as The Obstacle is the Way, Ego is the Enemy, The Daily Stoke, and many others. Now, this book is great because it follows the same kind of writing that Robert Greene has in his other books. Now, I know what you're thinking. You might remember the name, but let me kind of jog your memory here and show you some of uh, other Robert Greene's other books. So, of course, his most famous one, The 48 Laws of Power. I highly recommend this one. This book is so good. Uh, they actually banned it in some prisons because, again, it's about power. Um, I always recommend people to go through this book and pick out the three powers they violate most. Okay, Another book of his, um, The Art of Seduction. And then the last one that I have is... The 33 Strategies of War, and of course, I love uh, book design, and as you can see, there's kind of a theme here with how Robert Greene designs his books. So, but let's get to the book of the week. So, The Laws of Human Nature. Now, I like this book because for many of you who are, let's say, new students to the world of psychology, this is a great intro to it because as Robert Greene writes in all his books, he pulls a lot of research and distills great stories from history to make his points. And so, of course, in this book, you get a great introduction to psychology, history, and of course, stories related to it. So he'll pull stories from history, uh, from writers, uh, uh, military leaders, business people, and, and so forth, to make his point about the uh, chapter where he introduces a piece of human nature. And some of these chapters are, for example, like transform self-love into empathy, the law of narcissism, uh, narcissistic spectrum, and examples of narcissistic types. Um, another area here, know your limits, the laws of grandiosity, the success delusion, keys to human nature, the grandiose leader, practical grandiosity. So the way he has these chapters stru uh, structured is really fantastic because he'll introduce the concept, right? He'll tell you a story from history, but then he'll go into interpretations of it, right? And so he interprets what you should take away from those stories, and then he dives into more specific details, whether he gives you a specific psychological type or how to apply it in the real world. And so each one of these chapters is, again, these, this is a very heavily researched book, and it's about over six, close to 600 pages, right? But it's a really good one, I think, for many of you, you would enjoy. There's one chapter I do want to focus on, and that is change your circumstances by changing your attitude. And it starts with the law of sabotage, and I'm going to read directly here from the book. Each of us has a particular way of looking at the world, interpreting events, and the actions of people around us. This is our attitude, and it determines much of what happens to us in life. If our attitude is essentially fearful, we see the negative in every circumstance. We stop ourselves from taking chances. We blame others for mistakes and fail to learn from them. If we feel hostile or suspicious, we make others feel such emotions in our presence. We sabotage our career and relationships by unconsciously creating the circumstances we fear most. The human attitude, however, is malleable. By making our attitude more positive, open, and tolerant of other people, we can spark a different dynamic. We can learn from adversity, create opportunities out of nothing, and draw people to us. We must explore the limits of our willpower and how far it will take us. Now, something to point out to, that you have to understand about how the human brain works is that we're all born and we're born with the same genetic makeups of the brain, right? Brain stem, uh, cerebral cortex, these things are already hardwired in us, both from a software standpoint and a hardware standpoint, right? That's the genetics and physical makeup of the brain. The second layer on top of that is the traumas that we've experienced in our life. Things from our childhood, from um, the failures and successes of adult, we carry those things with us, right? And most people live in this world where they're essentially the recipient of reality. They go about life reacting to things, right? And those reactions are based on either the genetic and structural makeups of our brain or the childhood traumas and adult experiences we have or a combination of the two things. The third level though, which is what you can achieve by reading a book like this, is hacks, which means 
how can you engineer hacks into your mind and psyche to bypass these sort of primitive uh, 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 filters that you have, right? And what I mean by that is like optimism. Optimism is a skill, right? Being able to reframe things. So when you're struck with adversity, right? And when I first got laid off from one of my jobs, right? I reframed that situation and I what I perceived with rather than, oh my God, I lost my job. How am I going to pay rent? All these things. I restructured it and I said, I'm going to make even more money now because now that this job let me go, that was my opportunity. I'm actually going to make more money and I'm going to be in a better job, which is true. I actually went and took on a job where the salary is almost double what I was making and I was much, much happier. This is the power of attitude. Now, I want to read directly from the book so that way it can be as clear as possible. From the keys to human nature specifically on this topic, understand each of us sees the world through a particular lens that colors and shapes our perceptions and that's what you can call attitude. The great Swiss psych uh, psychologist Carl Jung, st student of Freud, defined this in the following way that attitude is a readiness of the psyche to act or react in a certain way. To have an attitude means to be ready for something definite, even though the something is unconscious. For having an attitude is synonymous with a pariah orientation to a definite thing, right? And so when we have an attitude, that's really from our ego, right? We bias things. But we can also have an attitude of attraction, right? Of curiosity, of abundance. and. You know, the, the, the thing that we have to keep in mind is that the stronger the stimuli, the stronger the response, the more we pay attention to it. So when somebody's walking over a bridge, right? For me, I walk over a bridge, let's say over a river, and I'm just thinking about getting to the other side. Someone in my family who has a fear of heights will be thinking about the height, the water, everything. You can get a hundred different people. It'll be the same bridge over the same river, but everybody looks and perceives it in a different way. The attitude that we carry throughout this life is really defined based on what I've mentioned before, which is the genetic makeup of your brain, the traumas that happen to you throughout life and your childhood, and then the hacks that you decide to layer on top of that, right? And so two key lessons I want to tell you about from this book, from, from, this, from this specific area about changing your circumstances by changing your attitude. Number one is that you must first become aware of your own attitude and how it actually slants your perceptions. And it's hard to observe this in your day-to-day life because it is so close to you, but there are ways to glimpse it in action. You can just see it in how you judge other people once uh, they are out of your presence, right? Or you can just you know, try your best to sort of observe yourself objectively about how you react to certain situations. If somebody tells you something and you have a reaction to it, sit back and say, why did I have that reaction to this person? Why did I get, why did what they say specifically bother me, right? That's the first step. And the second step is that you may not, you must not only be aware of the role of your attitude, but also believe in its supreme power to alter your circumstances. And of course, that's something that uh, Robert Dean goes through in this chapter, which is the different types of attitude, an anxious attitude, hostile one, etc. And then more specifically, the type of attitude you should have, which is one of abundance, expansion, and curiosity, right? And so by understanding psychology better, more specifically starting with your own psychology, the world opens up to you. You start to realize that you can actually author the reality that you want to live in. It may sound crazy, but that is in fact very much true. And if you look at, again, what I always mention in these videos, these great books in history, like Man's Search of Re Meaning, this man lived in Auschwitz concentration camp. Why were there some people who survived that camp, you know, who may not have been as strong, right? But somehow they survived, right? Perception, reframing, attitude, all these things. So you have that power within you. It's just you have to be able to learn how to educate yourself, to tap into it, and more importantly, become self-aware. This is the whole point of, of why people meditate, is because you start to develop yourself as a rock in a river so that as the water of emotions flow around you, anger, happiness, excitement, depression, you sit in that river of emotions like a rock, observing those emotions flow, flow around you and understanding them without getting swept up with them. So that's your book of the week. Go out and get it. Hope you enjoyed. You're definitely going to take some time reading through it because there's a lot of details on it. But for those of you who are young students or even old students of psychology, you're definitely going to love it. So as always, happy Wisdom Wednesday. Be safe out there. Buy books and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.